for, I know for me and Matt, when we first left, we actually had dinner with all of our parents the night that we left. Mm-hmm. Right. And he's on. Yeah. And it was cool. <laughs> like, I think it was pretty mutual amongst all of our parents. They were all... You guys like, got taken out to Benihana? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we should totally Dude. We went to Benihana, and then we left that night. After I had to make sure my chores were done the night before I left for tour. Our parents, I think it was a general apprehension, but they knew that our hearts were set on it, and we made so much of an effort to put the whole damn thing that they're going to let us go. How many shows was the first one? Our first tour was five weeks. Damn, so it's a long time. My first U.S. tour was... Yeah. Did you guys sleep at like random people's houses? Yep. Every night. Yeah. What was that? Night? What was it like? Like just you know, you're like I love it, man. Really? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I still don't get me wrong. Like, now that we like, we're at a level where we can afford to stay in hotels, mm-hmm. and uh, I mean, we're not staying at like the Hilton every night, but you know, hot wire hooks it up. Sometimes <laughs> like, you get the higher frequency, you know, oh, yeah. or whatever, but. But what I don't miss the tweaker, the house who who's owned by a tweaker who's you know snorting rails all night and yeah. walking around with a 357 Magnum, and, you know, and just like joking around about still whipping people. I don't miss that uh, stuff. Well, there was this one kid who dragged us back to his house, insisting he was all right, and then his older gangster brother beat him up in front of us for, for bringing all these bands to oh. his house. <laughs> Thinking about that embarrasses me. Dude, we have so many actual stories, and then we have inside jokes within the band, and then inside not jokes within the band about all the kind of craziness that comes along with anybody who's toured or not. You can just imagine, like Matt said, you're just you're surviving on like the, the generosity and the goodwill of people, mm-hmm. and sometimes it goes awry. It's crazy. Yeah, and, and the the randomness of it, like. For a while, it's cool, like, you're willing to put up with the bad and the good and everything is all just, you know, a fun roller coaster, but definitely, you know, five, ten years into it, you're like, it's kind of, you kind of get to the point where you're like, you know, I, you know, we do miss those really cool houses that we stayed at that were, like, good times and fun, yeah. but then you're like, you know, and I'm kind of just over the randomness of it sometimes. Yeah, you want more, you want more, uh, you know, more of a stasis, you know, you want more of a consistency. But for all of us, that was all back when, when I can probably safely say for all of us that we were never thinking about how much touring we still had to do mm-hmm. or were going to do. We were probably just in the moment, you know, yeah. which is why it's way more like chill. Yeah. I mean, I, I love, um, something I love about it now I and mean, to this day, the thing is, is that like when, when, we, when we did these tours, I mean, we did this for years. And I would just say on stage, we don't have a place to stay, mm-hmm. you know, um, we're six smelly dudes. You know, can, can you uh, hook us up? Like, there there was never a time where we didn't get a house. That's the thing. I mean, and there, there's a social experiment right there. there. I mean, there, right there, it's just like something really beautiful to be said about the human race in general. I mean, that every night we got hooked up. And some nights, you know, you get a mansion, like literally. Really? You know, there was times, yeah, oh, mansions, mansion, literally. No, no, like no, a real no. mansion? Real oh, mansion. Oh, dude, we've been to the same. There was a mansion we stayed at in Missouri that had a west. Someone is, Somebody's at your door. Who is it? They're not at our door, though. They're like, no. Go away. They're like, hello. They're not at the door, though. It seems like maybe they're trying to, like, maybe one of our cars. Maybe they're trying to get one of our cars. Hello. Anyway, well, anyway, um, so we were staying in a mansion in Missouri that had a west and an east wing and an Olympic-sized swimming pool. What? It was in the winter, so we didn't get to swim, of course. No one wanted to do the polar bear <laughs> challenge. Uh, uh, we also stayed in a mansion in, uh, what's the guy's name? Was it Winters or something? Oh, yeah. Winter. Outside of Houston? Yeah. No, it's Ohio. Yeah. And he, he had a straight-up, like, an elevator track thing that had a line that went down to the lake. You could like ride this like elevator yeah. thing all the way down to the lake. Really, really rich people have kids that like yeah. to go to shows. Yeah. <laughs> that, Every that's once in a while you get hooked up. And all these suburban areas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we see Collins. Yeah. In Rochester. In Rochester, Rochester yeah. University, we see the Dean's house. It was like the <laughs> it was my birthday. It was your birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Like the 15 bedroom like <laughs> castle, like up on this hill with this grass, like. It was like one of those houses that has a room that you can't touch. 
you know, those houses. Yeah. The, the but there have been also that places that, that like, you know, <laughs> people are partying over us while we're laying on the kitchen floor, right. trying to sleep. Uh, and they're just like, I got the RX band, it's in my one bedroom apartment, <laughs> everybody come over. Yeah, exactly. So, where does you, you can sleep right here in the hallway. Yeah. Yeah. Don't really worry. Good. It's cool. Thanks, buddy. I'm glad you don't worry about my ferrets. <laughs> <laughs> so where where does the fork in the road come? Like, what you guys said, you made a decision to to do the band. Like, yeah, the fork in the road doesn't even come in the form of like what your future ambitions are. A lot of times, the fork in the road comes in like what you choose to sacrifice as far as your life goes mm-hmm. for the music thing. So the thing is, is that this is just so all encompassing. Mm-hmm. You don't have an office 30 minutes, 15 minutes away from here. You are gone. You have to leave everything behind for the time that you head out on the road. You know? mm-hmm. Or at that time. As you get older and you know you get more resources available to you, you bridge that gap between home and the road more. That's part of what you know, kind of having luxury on tour is about. But. So, I mean, I don't know when it comes, but when it does, dude, you, everybody knows it. You know, that's for sure. I think there was definitely a time, like our first tour, I think, Probably for all of us, it was like, uh, you know, you kind of book your own tour, like Matt was saying, and you kind of have control if you want to just throw it in the summertime when there's no school or whatever. But at some point, you got to say, like, you know, we want to go on tour with other bands. Like, you ultimately want to be exposed to new people, so you're going to take whatever anyone's going to give you. You know, like, if there's yeah. a band that's offering you a tour that's in the middle of when you're going to go to college or you're, you got a job, you know, it's like you just decide... You know, this is a good opportunity, you got to take it, so. So how do you guys feel now? You know, looking back, you guys tell me all these crazy stories about mansions, and, you know, people with shotguns and kids getting beat up by their older brothers. <laughs> you know, like, how do you feel now? Do you, when you look back on all those years, are you, is there a sense of satisfaction, or is there, or is there, do you want to do more? More of what? I don't know, I, I don't know, like, do you more want to do more of Tweaker's houses? Well, not necessarily that, but... <laughs> More pay and dues? No, I think we've had plenty of pay and dues. Yeah. Or of that kind. Yeah. So far. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, like, how do you feel now, looking back on all that? Great. Well, great. Yeah. Definitely a sense of satisfaction. And yeah. also, I was like, I wouldn't trade anything for anything. It's such a beautiful experience to get to meet all those different people. It's a good or bad. I mean, the things that we've all learned as people what we've learned from those experiences is priceless. And to think of that, you know, although there are a lot of bands out there, a lot of bands who are, I mean, out of the overall population of this earth, the percentage of people that get to do that in their lifetime is so small. And then for for us to be so so lucky to be able to do this for a living and, and to be doing it for so long, it's just amazing. Tight. Oh, overall, it's a pretty serendipitous existence in general. You know what I mean? Like, it relies on that a lot. So when you look back on all the, it's like you get to look back on multi like different aspects of it, like your own hard work, mm-hmm. those own like chance moments, those crazy times. You know, whatever rewards you have, you know, to what degree. So it's cool. Is this like a humbling experience? Is it absolutely for us? It was. Right. I think it can either make you. It can be humbling or it can make you jaded and kind of shitty, mm-hmm. or any combination in between thereof, you know. But I think that for us it's really, like, kept us in touch with our roots, and, you know. We're, not, we're still not mega or anything, but mm-hmm. we've come a long way since then, and it's able to make us appreciate what we have a lot more. I think. You know, there are, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I'm sure you know how to word this, but, um, you know when you're like a kid, you, you perceive being in a band completely different than it actually is. Yeah. I mean, when you meet these like sixteen-year-old kids now, do you, do you wonder where they come up with this stuff? Like you? No, I don't wonder. Because well, well, for yeah. some people, it is, it is, it does happen that way. You know, for some people, they do. They're really young, and whatever the circumstances are, it blows up, gets huge, and yeah. either it's a flash in the pan, or they turn out to be Britney Spears and they last forever in this crazy existence of what to me seems like torture, but like, uh, but I think for us, you know, like it's definitely, it's been like a, a long, like we're kind of a, a, like a working band, you know, it's been our like 
a big mission for us, you know, and it's absolutely all been worth it, you know, and all been memorable and, and great. But yeah, I mean, it's, I think for some people it ends up that, that way, but I think that ultimately we're, uh, I think we're all like happy for the experience that we've had and uh, probably a, a little more well-rounded than the like Britney Spears of the world. <laughs> I wonder if the yeah. generations now are, are even similar to kind of our kind of crazy routine. Because I feel like maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Maybe I'm just like too old now to see it, but I feel like their expectations have grown. I feel like my generation when I was 16, like my friends and stuff, our biggest dream was if we could go on tour on a tour bus, yeah. <laughs> or s- play the Fillmore or Slims in San Francisco, like mm-hmm. then we had it made. Like mm-hmm. yeah. we, you could not get me- more mega than that. Whereas people yeah. now, I see young kids that are just like getting people to invest money in wrapping their trailer and trying to like go to South by Southwest and play eight shows a day and then do like a break dancing session at night to promote whatever CD. <laughs> and I'm just like, wait, is there a Yeah. Oh wow. People they get. Crazy. Did you guys go this year? Mm-hmm. Last year. I've never actually been to South by Southwest. I don't know if I really want to go. Save yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Save yourself. Yeah. If you want to stay <laughs> loving music and uh-huh. like you know and not get burnt out and <laughs> love going to shows and that experience, dude, mm-hmm. stay away from yeah, it. It's, it's, it's like you should promote it because yeah. you know, I mean, it's like uh, it's like a yeah. music <laughs> it's like a music industry like narcissism orgy. Yeah. Oh, it's just like it, it's all. I mean, drunken. Yeah, you drunken. Gotta, you got to add drunken. Or it's so <laughs> so much and food. It's for <laughs> for people like us, like especially like um, you know, like all of us pretty much have like our own little home recording studios and and uh, for people you know uh, that we do on the side and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, so like someone who lo- loves to like manipulate sound, like sonic manipulation. And, and it's just enamored with, with the creation of sound and, like I said, the manipulation. To hear, it's the closest thing. It's, I mean, it's right up there with like mosquitoes and traffic for me. Yeah. For my own personal yeah. health, yeah, it yeah. is to hear the the kind of just cacophony that's going on. Like just the, distant shows. It's just constantly. noise pollution, you know. That's you how you hear like it. five. Five bands playing all at once, yeah, and you're just like happy, losing yeah, your yeah. mind. And then there's the, the five uh, random industry people coming up, and like, I love your band, yeah. let's do this. You're like, you don't even know. It's just so overwhelming, dude. Yeah. Over, like, you don't even have to talk to anybody. Going, it's just you, our bus was parked at Red River and Sixth Street for like two nights, was it? Like two yeah, days. Like Literally, hours. like there is no more dead center of Austin, Texas, especially like the music scene, especially for South by Southwest and. Those two days, dude, I almost lost it. Like, seriously, it was just not it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, this kind of this totally changes the conversation a little bit. But I want to know, like, you know, you guys are doing what you're doing now. You have played with some pretty big bands. I mean, like, yeah, you played with some pretty big bands. Like, how much do you think that public relations plays a part of the band's success? Because you can you can tour as much as you can. You the know? bands in general, or bands like us? Uh, depends on bands, the bands in general. I, I, yeah. I would say that since we kind of fall out of the line of most bands, and I don't mean that in a good or bad way. I'm not yeah. saying it's better or worse. I'm just saying we do. That's the bottom line. Like everybody can recognize that. Like mm-hmm. for most bands, it's crucial. For us, I don't think it helps that much personally. Yeah. Nobody comments remarks on us or. It's turned on by us in masses from the big tours we've done. Mm-hmm. Aside from, like, I reluctantly admit, Warp Tour, you know. You, you guys don't like Warp Tour? No. Yeah, it, was it was good at the time. But it, was it was good for us at the time, but... When did you guys do Warp Tour? Oh, yeah, 2002. I was a junior in high school. And I went, I went to the 2002 one, actually. And what was the experience at Warp like? We just... To me, it was like just like the absolute violent consumerism of it all. It was just like not like hurt my feelings. <laughs> violent consumerism <laughs> of it all just hurt my feelings. You know, oh, it's, it's just like the way it is, and and it's not about music to me. Um, some people love it, and I'm not knocking it. It's only my opinion. You know, people can believe what you want to believe. You know, don't listen to me. <laughs> but in my opinion. 
you know, we play a 25 minute set. Um, there's corporate banners all over the place. Uh, it's, it's like a punk rock shopping mall. Yeah, it's like, um, and I mean, one aspect of it, maybe like the kids these days with like the, uh, you know, limited attention span, maybe that's what people really want. It's hard for me to believe that. You know, it's just like, Maybe, maybe, but the oversaturation of it, to me, it just it really, it was a real bum out. Not only that, but like, there's no real focus on the aesthetic of the venue, or the or the aesthetic of the of the performance, it's just like, you're in a parking lot, you know? Yeah. Like, who wants to just be in a parking lot to see a band? The bands we knew, even, had it way worse than us, and then just... If you guys had to do this again, like, if, if you were 15 now, would you still do it all over again? Do what? Even the band, the whole thing. In a hard oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah dude. Where, where do you guys see this going from here on out? Or where do you want it to go? All we got right now. Yeah. Cool. Just maintain course, dude. Everything's been all good. We get lots of love. You know, there's a lot of people that don't know us. That's all good because the amount of love we do get is just like crazy. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming, it's actually. This is the. the Kind of related to your PR question. Yeah, I like a band like us. Excuse me, band like us. I think the PR thing doesn't really. I mean, it has it has it has its place, but mm-hmm. overall, I mean, our music speaks for itself. Yeah. Um, our actions as a band speak for themselves, and um, I don't know. We kind of I think it's more personal for people, and uh, we try. Like especially with like the modes that we record, the way we for sure. the way we record, we we um, we do it because it's honest. You, know? you do your takes live, yeah. yeah. And I, that's totally admirable. And that I, I could go off on that for like an hour, but <laughs> um, yeah, um, you you record it all like the live takes. Yeah, all the music, all the instruments. We sit in the same room together and we play it. Beginning to the end. Yeah. Wait, you guys all play live together, or yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fucking smart. Awesome. I mean, when it comes down to it, we spend a little bit more time, like at the beginning, initially getting sounds because it's a different, a different style of getting sounds rather than having an amp and different things in one room where you can control it more. Like it's definitely a lot more work to make it sound as good as you want it to sound okay. in the beginning. But once you got that sound, then you just go. Yeah, I mean, there's. We're still able to get pragmatic about it. And there are small, if there's a huge error and a great take that we like, you know, like, we're not super dogmatic about it anymore. You know, I think when we were younger, we were super diehard about leave it pure, you know, but it's like, we still keep it to a minimum. But it's now, it's like, it's more about the feeling for us than it is about something to prove, you know, or at least for myself, too. So, you know, we still want to put the sound first, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's not like, we're not super diehard where we're doing something like chanting, loving ourselves in mud before we go, like, we start, like, <laughs> like play all live together, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So. I love myself in mud. We did do that a couple of times. I bet you that too, but. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? Yeah. Yeah. Good for your skin. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we, uh, I don't know what I'm going to say. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, we all. The you know, you know, whole idea is just like, um, actually, I read one of your blogs today. You know, because someone sent me a link to this, and I was like, you know, what's this guy all about? Yeah, I was yeah. checking this out. Right, so check it out. And I read this thing about you were talking about how um, I forget the, the guy from uh, Almost Famous, uh, the Lester Banks. Lester Banks. Yeah. How, how he said that uh, that music uh, technology is ruining music, mm-hmm. and. Um, and how you were commenting on that. So, yeah, yeah. And I actually, I thought that was pretty cool you were, that you wrote about that. I was actually surprised that, that, you were, that someone was writing about that. Mm-hmm. I thought it was pretty cool. Because, you know, 90% of all the music you hear, you know, around these days, especially in, like, the rocks, and the, I yeah. guess, you know, I don't want to call it this, but, like, the AP crowd or whatever. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know how else to call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of music, that, I don't know, it's called Scream or whatever, I'm not good at the genres or whatever. But, it, you know, it's all, you know, they put all the drums on the grid and everything is played, you know, one by one, and everything is chopped and, and it's made perfect. 
And so ultimately, all you're listening to is just like technology. You're listening to like a human that originally like made these sounds, but then it's being all organized by a robot, F or less, right? Totally. And so I mean, our whole our whole idea is that we feel like the people who are listening to our music want to hear us, right? Because it's all the record really is is a recording of people creating sound together. Yeah. So I don't I think I mean in a way, I mean I could call those bands out and say that's not even a record. I mean that yeah. that's a that's a it's it's a record because that's what it's called, but it's it's not it's not them in a room. It's it's them with their producer sitting there on a on a computer, you know, chopping everything for hours and hours and hours mm-hmm. and then doing nothing, you know. Whereas for us it's it's more about the there's so much more that's that's recorded in a recording than actual sound, right? Oh, for sure. So like when you're in a room with with everyone, with, with with the musicians, there's so much more going on in between mentally, you know. There, there and I feel like it, that stuff is recorded as well. So that yeah. is in the recording, you know. That there's more to it than just the sound. The 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 vibe is captured. Because yeah. everyone's together and whatever's going on, whatever emotional, whatever kind of things happened or whatever kind of texture, like a lot of the time we get before we do a take, we sit down and we talk about what kind of visual texture we want to create, you know, with our our oral uh, soundscape or, or whatever. And um, so when you're all in a room together and, and everyone's vibing and, and everyone's, you know, uh, feeding off each other, that's the true, honest creation. There. You know, that is us in a room, whether we screw up and just blow it, you know, yeah. or, or whether there's a few, you know, mistakes here and there and we choose to take them. Either way, that's us. That's all we are. We're moving from our it's so much more exciting now, right? Like, we're wanting to make a foreground record rather than a background record, you know? Yeah. It's like if you were to equate it to, like, something visual, like, all that kind of, like, processed rock music where they take live performance and just hack it to bits. It's not even like airbrushing a picture of a girl for like a maximum cover. Yeah. That would be like taking the image of her skin and reconstructing her body completely to look yeah. different. We don't want to make a record that people really like that want to put it on when they're doing homework or like in their car only. We want to make a record that people are going to sit down with their friends on the couch, not have a TV on and listen to. Like they're going to make go out of their way to put on a pair of headphones yeah, like, yeah, and like do whatever they do, you know, before and, like, listen to it, you know what I mean? Like, something that is actually, like, I don't know, uh, for lack of a better term or, you know, for fear of sounding too pretentious about it, it's just, like, we want to make something that people really take or enjoy, that something, a record that people take seriously about their enjoyment of, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Definitely, so something that people trust. Yeah, something that they yeah. trust. That's the thing with me. In my heart, I don't trust a lot of records that come out nah. these days. Yeah, I'm nah. just like, that's. I know that's bullshit. I can hear that. Yeah. You know, like every note is tuned. Like every drum hit. Like that sound replaced. Right? I know it. You're a cheater. I would like to clarify that we do not take like the holier than thou stance, which is no, which is not. why I said earlier that we're not opposed to fixing stuff. Everybody yeah. has their own varying degree. It's not like we're like. 1,000% organic, nothing was fixed, like, fuck anybody who does, it's more like, you know, we like to take the more organic route, where we're less sculpture, album making based, mm-hmm. as opposed to kind of like snapshot, photographic, you know, documentation That's of the music we're making. Well, you're talking about like, you know, like old records and how, you know, when they're recorded, there's something beyond the sound that's actually there. Mm-hmm. Um, the little voices of people yelling in the room that you don't recognize right away. Mm-hmm. It all adds to it so much, dude. And people are going to listen to our record and hear so much of us playing. Not like what we are, what we wrote, but what we're actually playing and saying and doing. That is awesome. Like, I wanted to comment that, uh, you know, that, that Ohio Players band, um, that Roller Coaster song. In this song, like, you can hear a faint yeah, scream in the that. background. And I like, heard some it's, crazy stories about that. Yeah, like, apparently, apparently someone in the studio, in, like, the control room, got murdered. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, while it was going on. You got, like, this bloody murder that scream. That gave me chills, dude. Some girl, yeah. Like, so yeah, some chick. Like a prostitute? Like no, no, no. There was a model who did the cover of the record. I read this on some internet site. Yeah. She was on the cover of the record, and she put this, like, stuff on her body that was, like, supposed to be... Like, Look like honey, but it was like some epoxy or whatever. It looked better on camera. Oh, she had talked. And like it, like it, it, um, 
it like burned her skin permanently. So she came in like demanding money, and like, the manager shot her or something. Like that. Yeah, pretty yeah, crazy. So crazy. I remember. Not that we have anything like that on our record. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs>